Action. Action. <laughs> yeah. Did you work anywhere else besides the Burke Yarns over in the furniture? I worked uh, for Henry Don Furniture Company. Uh, went there in 1988 and um, actually, that's not right, 1980, 1989, from 1989 to 2001. And um, I worked in customer service for the upholstery division. What happened was they moved the upholstery division to Morganton from High Point, even though all the upholstery for Henry Don, upholst fully upholstered items, was made in High Point, they moved the customer service division to uh, Morganton. When I first went there, I was actually, they hired me to set up and be over the file department. Now, that, that file department was a little bigger than this room. You're talking about every single customer that Henry Don Furniture has, there's a file on. And that is everything, orders coming in and going, you had to keep up with all of it all the time. So my first job was I went to High Point, hired, uh, learned seven different jobs, came back and hired five girls to do the file, for the file department, and I was head of the file department. I did that for two years, and then they moved me into customer service for the upholstery division. And you had to go to High Point, you had to learn how everything was made. And the thing that a lot of people don't realize, the difference that made Henry Don Furniture what it was, was everything's made to order and they only cut one piece at a time. So that you don't cut multiple pieces at a time. Every piece of furniture, and one person works on that piece of furniture. You don't have two or three people working on each end and stuff like you do a lot of furniture. One person makes that piece of furniture. It, one person, once it goes to the cutting room, it, you get your order in, one person cuts it out, cuts out the pattern, then it goes to the next apartment, and it starts, they put in all the um, uh, filling of whatever kind of filling you want. you got choices, of different kinds of seats, cushions, and back cushions, and all that. And then when it comes down to doing the actual upholstering, one person does it. Only one person does it. So it will be the same all the way around, and you, won't, you, won't, you can't tell the difference. That's what made Henry Don Furniture so special. Is it, that's why it's such good furniture. And that was for fully upholstered chairs and sofas and love seats, uh, sectionals, you know, all that. It was very interesting. And then you could... Custom furniture, everything was custom. You know, you told them how, lo how long you wanted it, the seat depth, seat height, arm height, arm the depth. You, you know, what kind, if you wanted Fortis cushion, if you wanted a, um, um, uh, blended cushions, um, just, you had so many options, it was, it was amazing. Uh, and to watch it being built was just phenomenal. I mean, it's just, it's like, wow, and they, they keep it going. And then the inspection on them is just, it's almost like you got, uh, the same person did inspection for years and years and years, and it's almost like she had a magnifying glass going over that fabric. I mean, each, if it was had a line in it, if a, if a fabric had a line or was a paisley print or any, any, all the different kinds of prints, a flower, say for a flower, it had that flower had to match up if the cushion, even if it's a loose cushion, you could pick it up. That flower, if it stopped here, then it same it picked up on the welt line. It was the same all the way down, and it was exactly equal. You stand back and look at the middle; it was the same on this side as it was this side. I and mean, it was really, really amazing to watch them work. You like working there. I loved it. I really did. I loved working in, in customer service. It was hard, oh my goodness, because you knew I had North Carolina, my territory was North Carolina, South Carolina, part of Virginia, New York State, part of Canada. I had all the east end, um, parts of the east end of the states. So my day started at 8 o'clock or before if you could answer. If you answered your phone before 8, you're just going to start then. And it didn't stop to 5 o'clock because of the time zones. I had the early time zones, so all my day started early. So I averaged anywhere between 85 to 120 calls a day. 
And nine times out of ten, every time you answer that phone, you're just probably going to get cussed out. <laughs> because the way it worked was the salesman on the other end of the phone was had the customer there. So they was wanting that customer to be impressed with them. So they was saying, I'm going to put the heat on these people. I'm calling customer service. I'm going to get them through there. I'm going to make sure you get your furniture on time. I'm going to do it. So they would call, and they would just get, just, you know, give you hell. You know, and you're sitting there, and I know what's going on, so you can't take it personal, right? And I was like, okay, yeah, well, it's scheduled to ship this day. We've got a truck coming. It's leaving on Friday. And then they'll, all of a sudden, you just let them rattle along for a minute or two, and then finally they'll say, okay, well, thank Well, just make sure you do that, okay? Yes, sir, we'll do it. <laughs> we hang up. Then after the customer leaves, they call you back. I'm sorry, Doris. I'm really sorry. <laughs> so it was interesting, but, yeah. How would you keep records? Because you didn't have computers then. Yeah, we had computers. Uh, we had files, uh, paper files. And so if somebody wanted, once an order come in, once the company sent an order in to the, uh, to the company, um, for, it, it went to um, order entry, what they call order entry. So order entry checks the order to make sure, see if everything's on there that, they pop, that everybody's going to need. And there again, if everything's custom, so it had to have the size, it had the depth. It had to, if it didn't have anything on that, they'd flag it with a check mark or whatever, and they sent it to the customer service person that handles that particular company. So every company, you had, you know, all your files had sent it, so you had to get that information, so that means you got to call them. So you got to call, get all that information, you got to send it back to order entry. If something else shows up that they didn't get to, they send it back to you again. I mean, it goes back and forth, finally gets in, or then you go check on the computer. By this time, the company's calling you, and everything has an order number. So if, you, if they have an order number, then they can give you that order number. You can check pretty good. You can check and see what it is. But if they didn't have an order number, you got to go to the file department where they set the file department and get pull that file and then find that order and and see what the order number is or see what's going on with it, why there's a holdup or whatever, and, and answer your question. So, I mean, you'd make 100 trips a day back and forth to the file department, you know, which was right there on the hallway. But, I mean, you still had to get up and leave your desk. So it was, and once you got something shipped, it was like, ha, ah, magic. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> How many people worked at Henny Don when you were there? Oh, my gosh. I have no clue. Thousands. Yeah. And see, that was what the, I just worked for the upholstery division, which was in High Point. And now, Case Goods is all made here in Morrington and Spruce Pine. So Case Goods is all your entertainment centers, your tables, chairs, uh, all that, your dining room chairs and uh, tables and all your hard hard uh, case, anything that's a case good, just like wood that you see. And that was, all that was done here and in Spruce Pond. And they had, we also had an upholstery plant in Mount Airy. And there was one up here in Marion uh, that they did um, the, the cheaper brands of uh, furniture that uh, they were well-made furniture, but they were the the, uh, the cheaper line. I reckon they made more inexpensive, I should say, instead of cheaper. <laughs> they, so they a chair would go from uh, here to High Point to be upholstered? No, no. Now, your dining room chairs is different. So, like, they're only, the seat in the back is, is upholstered like this. Okay, then that's they could do that here in Warrington. What the upholstery division in High Point is a fully upholstered chair, like you don't see no wood on it. it yeah, it's fully upholstered. It has big rolled arms or, you know, stuffing uh, all over everywhere. There's a difference in the fully upholstered. These are considered um, case goods here because you've got exposed wood. And anything like this, this seat cushion can pop in. You can, it's like uh, uh, screwed in. Or in the back is screwed in, so this is considered, you know, this is not considered fully upholstered. Oh. <coughs> it's uh, case goods. I don't know a lot about. I went through the factory just to see how it was made, but I know it's just it's just as amazing as the upholstery was, if not more. Especially when you get into the oriental uh, pieces, because all the all the oriental pieces are hand painted. They had they had like. Uh, 
a few women back there, and I say a few because it was just a few because it was so hard, and they had these little teeny tiny brushes, and so they did every bit of the hand painting on those pieces. My so. mother, my brother-in-law's mother, that's what she did at Drexel. She hand painted. Wow, yeah. she's talented. Yeah, yeah, that's talented. Goodness gracious. Um, it's amazing. They fascinate me. When you left Henry Don, was it, did they close down or did you? I got, no, I got caught up in the middle management layoff. Uh, when they moved, they ended up moving the upholstery division back to High Point. So they decided it's going to put in an 800 number for people just all over America that could call in for the 800 number and ask any question, like if you get, open a magazine and you see an ad by Henry Don, you could call in and order fabric swatches, you could call in and ask, you know, where this is made or what that fabric is, what is the, the number on that, fa that fabric pattern number, any information, or you can order catalogs. Each, uh, at Henry Don, each group has its own division, like, uh, like, um, I can't remember, Folio 16 was a certain type of uh, group of furniture. And so it had a catalog. So each different name had a catalog. So you could actually order those catalogs because they're really nice catalogs in color and all that. So they thought, okay, this 800 number, we're going to do that. So they put me in, the, uh, in charge of the 800 number. So you just took orders all day long and filled them with sending out these catalogs and and um, and take you had to get checks in you had to do do all that and send it you know through the system and do all that. Then uh, my my back went out on me again and so that's when they told me that I wouldn't walk again. So I lost my job period then and. Uh, so basically they laid me off so that I didn't have to, you know, go through that. So they laid me off from there. But then I got back. I had surgery and come back again and become a realtor. And so after the back went out on me again, and then I quit doing that. So I, I hadn't done anything since. <laughs> so. Where'd you go to grammar school? Oak Hill. Went to Oak Hill Elementary School, um, well, Oak Hill High School, and Willow Tree Junior High. Oak Hill Junior High School, which was, was Willow Tree, they bust us from Oak Hill over to Willow Tree, and then back to Oak Hill in the afternoons. Yep. And then I went to Western Piedmont uh, to, uh, and got my advanced associate degree. Uh, got my also got my educational um association degree from the state of North Carolina through the Burke County School System. That was through the educational office personnel group that they that you can go for four years and get an advanced associate through that. So. How far did the school did your mother and father go? Dad went to the fourth grade. My mom went to the eighth grade. And that was it. Did you ever think you'd go to college? No. As a matter of fact, I can remember asking uh, Dad wanting to go to the community college because back then, you know, back then the community college was a big thing because it was new. And uh, I remember when I got out, I said I said something to Dad about going to to college, you know, and he says, he says you got a high school education, that's all you need. Now it's time for you to go to work. And so that's what I did. <laughs> but and then I ended up after I worked for the school system for a while. Uh, one of my boss ladies there convinced me that, you know, you can do anything that you set your mind to do. And he says, and she's the one that probably taught me more values than anybody in my life because she kept making me prove to myself that I could do things. She would give me just jobs that I would look at her and say, there's no way that I can get that done. And she says, she'd pat me on my shoulder, she'd say, it's okay, honey, you just do the best you can do, and that's all we can ask. And then I'd get it done, and I was like, wow, I got this done. And it's, I even got time left before her meeting, because she was wanting all this stuff done before a meeting. And I was like, well, I can't believe I got all this done, you know. And so I'd get it done, and she'd, then she'd always wink at me. She said, I knew you could. You're a smart cookie. I knew you could do it. 
And I thought, well, maybe I can do that. So I thought, okay, I'm going back to school. <laughs> so I had a daughter. At that time, I had a daughter. And so I'd take her with me to class. And I'd take her with me. And uh, she'd sit there and look at her books and just was good as gold. And I'd take her with me to my part-time job. I was going to school, working two jobs and, and at the same time. And uh, raising her. And uh, I'd take her with me. And she'd sit there and watch her read her books and she was fine. And we'd get out, and she was just, I thank the good Lord, they, he blessed me with this wonderful child, because I could have never done it had she not been as good as she was. What's her name? Tana Shea. Tana Shea Featherby. How old is she now? She'll be 47 in December 5th. That's the only child you had? Yes. Sure is. Ironically, uh, I probably won't use this, but Ironically, when the, I had the accident at Burke Yarns and they sent me to Winston, they found I had cancer. And so they sent me to Chapel Hill for cancer treatments, and so I didn't get to have any more children. That was, so that was how that came about. Sometimes they find those things when they're looking for something else. And yeah. Going in. yeah. Yeah. Well, they taught, they said, you know, because we're coloring, let's do a routine physical. Uh, I don't like the way she looks. <laughs> okay. What well, if she said she wanted to work in one of the mills? What would you have told her? I would have probably done, to the best of my ability, I would have tried to talk her out of it. Mainly because... Could you rephrase that? Okay. Because um, he repeat the question. Kind of make a statement. Yeah. Oh, okay. If, if my daughter came and asked if to work in the mill. Okay, okay, you want me to do it? Okay. If, it's okay. No. Um, if my daughter came to me and asked or told me that she wanted to go to work in a mill, I would probably do my best to talk her out of it. And one of the main reasons is, and I found this really at Burke Yarns is where, where I heard, you know, learned so much about this. The language is horrible, the women, uh, and you saw things that I had never been, you know, uh, exposed to, and I definitely would not want her exposed to, of women being very aggressive uh, in every way, shape, and form, and language was just horrible, and so I would talk, try my, I do everything in my willpower to talk her out of it. Uh, for that reason, and it's just such hard. It's dangerous work. It's dangerous and it's hard. It's just extremely hard work. And my hats goes off to all the women in this county that worked in those mills, and men too. But it seems like the it was always women that did the hard part. Like um, they had a department at Burke Yarns. It's called the winding department, and it was after. The yarn was made into a texturing department. It went to the winding department to turn it into whether it was cotton or whatever other kind of filament they make. I can't remember all those. And it was like this ear-piercing sound. The machines made this extremely loud ear-piercing sound in that department. You had to wear earplugs, of course, but because it was so loud, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't hear. If you, it would probably damage your hearing. Probably did so anyway to a lot of people, I would guess. But um, there's just so many things that I, I wouldn't, I would not want my daughter to work in a place like that. So uh, I'm thankful she went into the health industry. <laughs> you the first person in your family to go to college? Yes, I am. I'm the. Just trying to think. Um, I reckon I'm the only one. 